My name is Scott Coffin, and I'm a research scientist with the California State Water Resources Control Board. Today, I'll be discussing my presentation entitled Leveraging Big Data to Predict Microplastics Toxicity for Aquatic Organisms. Understanding risks of microplastics is critical to informing decision making. We held an expert workshop to evaluate the impacts of microplastics on humans and aquatic ecosystems. While microplastics have both chemical mediated and particle mediated hazards, we focused on evaluating the particle based hazards for this assessment. Species sensitivity distributions are often used in ecotoxicological risk assessments to predict community level impacts of a stressor. Unlike dissolved contaminants, microplastics differ in toxicities based on their size and other parameters. When building a species sensitivity distribution based on size groupings, the different distributions reflect these arbitrary size bins. Microplastics are an extremely diverse contaminant suite with many different polymers, shapes, and sizes. These can all impact toxicity and can pre present significant challenges to risk assessors. While environmental microplastics are diverse in shape, size, and polymer type, Laboratory effect studies are typically conducted using a single particle type or distribution not representative of what's in the environment. Using probability distributions, we can compare effect studies done using monodispersed particle types to polydispersed environmental concentrations. To make these comparisons, it's critical that we understand the relevant exposure metric and restrict these alignments to the bioavailable particles. For food dilution, we consider only ingestible size particles and volume to be the relevant metric. For tissue trans translocation, only translocatable sizes are considered and surface area is considered to be the relevant metric. Here's an example of aligned species sensitivity distributions of microplastics based on different exposure metrics. This alignment framework is agnostic to categorical differences in a particle's shape and composition in influencing toxicity, which led me to question if a microplastic's shape or polymer can affect its toxicity. Comparing polymers in the toxicity database to those in the environment, there's a mismatch in the relative proportions, with an overrepresentation of polystyrene and an underrepresentation of polyamide in the toxicity database. The same mismatch holds true to shapes, with a disproportionate number of studies focused on spheres and very few focused on fibers. Laboratory experiments demonstrate that fibers can be more toxic than spheres at the same exposure concentrations by mass, potentially due to mechanisms that cannot be captured in the alignments. We used machine learning to predict toxic effect concentrations of microplastics using the Tomex database. The objectives of this modeling are to determine the drivers of toxicity, which, which exposure metrics best predicts effects, and determine the viability of using such models to predict toxicities. The Tomex database is rich and diverse, with uh, 167 manuscripts, over 6,000 measurements, three shapes and 14 polymers, and particles ranging from 20 nanometers to 5 millimeters. We performed relative feature analysis to determine which parameters drive toxicity. This analysis reveals that organism and experimental design characteristics, such as species and exposure duration, are most important in determining a microplastics toxicity effect concentration. While particle characteristics like shape and polymer were found to be significant, however, to a lesser degree. A simple general linear model demonstrates the interplay between the exposure duration shown in the x-axis here and the particle size grouped by different bins seen in, the, seen in the panels. And you can see on the y-axis is the probability of survival. As you have longer exposure durations, the probability of survival for that organism decreases. Partial dependence analysis with our model suggests that fibers are indeed more toxic than fragments and spheres, holding all other variables constant. We perform stepwise multiple regression to determine which exposure metric best correlates with effects, selecting one exposure metric for each model one at a time. All of the best models included the parameters shown here with plus marks. <laughs> 
There was no clear differences between the exposure metrics and predicting toxicity based on R squared or Akaike's information criteria corrected for sample size or AICC. Finally, we asked if a machine learning model can accurately predict effect concentrations for microplastics. We tested multiple models, and a few of them are shown here. We found that a random forest model performed the best of the models we tested for predicting exposure effect concentrations, with an R squared of 0.84 uh, compared to a general linear model of having an R squared of 0.62. We used this random forest model to predict effect concentrations for tissue translocation and food dilution ecologically aligned relevant metrics. The empirical species sensitivity distribution is shown in red with the model predicted distribution shown in blue. You can easily see that for tissue translocation, the model was less accurate in predicting uh, exposure concentrations than the food dilution model. Uh, having an R squared of 0.87 relative to 0.82 for tissue translocation. The reason for this is that the tissue translocation model was built using translocatable size uh, effect studies, or smaller than 83 microns in diameter, uh, which largely restricted the training database. And as you have more data in your training database, you have more accurate predictions. We used the random forest model to predict food dilution effect concentrations for a realistic distribution of microplastics based on the relative proportions of polymers and shapes that are actually found in the environment. By comparing these species sensitivity distributions, we can see that they're not significantly different than the empirical distribution, as demonstrated by the significant overlap of these 95% confidence intervals, uh, the colored ribbons shown here. In contrast to our hypothesis that realistic microplastics polymers and shapes would result in lower toxicity thresholds, the machine learning model predicted higher effect concentrations, uh, at least through this species sensitivity distribution approach. However, the empirical and the predicted thresholds were not significantly different from one another. Our machine learning model is available on the Tomex app, which will soon be available to the public. I'll provide you a brief walkthrough for how one would use our app to use these machine learning models to predict effect concentrations. On the predictions tab, you can download test data as well as valid values for formatting your data set. You want to make sure that your data is formatted exactly the way that the test data set is formatted as shown here in the CSV file. Once your data is formatted correctly, you can click on the upload data tab and upload your own uh, real or theoretical microplastics effects data. It will then generate a series of plots showing all the variables overlaying the distributions of the test data set with the training data set. The closer these are, the more accurate the model predictions will be. Once you choose the ecologically relevant metric to predict, whether it be food dilution or tissue translocation, the model will rapidly predict the effect concentrations for each row. So each row would be one organism with one exposure concentration. If you measured the actual effect concentrations, there's another plot that can actually show you the correlation between what the model predicted and what the actual exposure concentration is for, for each row. And so this test data that is currently in the app that I used is 30% of the Tomex database. So I just split that from the training set. And you can see here, this has an R squared of 0.87, so fairly accurate prediction for the exposure effect concentration. Tomex is also an open data repository for microplastics toxicity data. And as more data is added, the accuracy of the model will increase. I'd like to thank my co-authors, Leah Thornton Hampton, Wynne Cowger, and Bart Coleman's, as well as the expert working group and the open source community. In conclusion, our novel modeling tool can inform study design and provide insights about microplastics toxicities. We found that particle characteristics were of low importance in predicting toxicity relative to exposure and organism traits.
Finally, there seems to be inconclusive evidence for the exposure metric driving effects. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to connecting with you further.